So my son came back out. See it's at about 20 amps and climbing. There is a cloud outside about to cover back up. So I want to show you all the grid tie when it's actually going good. So I'm going to turn the charging off. And we're going to run one of the inverters. I'll show you it climbing up here. I'm going to go ahead and turn my other grid tie on as well. Two of the grid ties on so far. Ain't got enough power in the sun power right now to do uh, more than two grid ties going right now. Let's see, it's going to climb. Hopefully, it climbed about four or five hundred watts on here. Let's see, because we're running two of them. Hopefully, that cloud doesn't cover the sun while we're doing this. I'm just shy of 400. Let me grab a, let's turn a third one on, see if that makes a difference. Oh, there we go. So now we're running three grid ties. Of course, it's not now putting a bunch of it, but we're still climbing. So that's what's in, and that's, uh, this grid ties going. Well, this one's moving right here, and so is this one down here. So this one's, uh, there's only one picking up the slack of the other two, which I'm going to kick that one out and see if it makes a difference or not. Let's see if my wide goes up any from, yeah, a couple watts. Oh, then we drop two. Okay, well, obviously we need that third one because we peaked our inverters out. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and shut down. Let's go ahead and shut. This is 24 volts. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to shut this one off here again on the 12 volt side. Turn 12 volts back onto charging. And we were getting 22 amps almost. That's what was running the two of the grid ties. The third one, like I said, was running off this right here, which is the 24 volt bank being charged. I went ahead and did this. This is the easy way to do wiring series and parallel. Well, at least series wise. Go ahead and you take a breaker and put it between your positive and your negative wire here. And this right here, right now, is got with a close like this, it's got these connecting so it runs them in series. So two batteries, 24 volts. Same thing on these two batteries, 24 volts. Now you can go ahead and click this off right here. And what this is going to do is now they're disconnected. Now you can run a 12 volt charger on here. And you cannot run the 12 volt charger on this wire unless you do a disconnect on this one as well. So like on the positive negative wire, it goes this way. So I do not have mine that way. So if I was to put a charger on this battery right now, it would burn the wire up because it's going positive to negative over here. However, though, if you actually put a third breaker, one on this wire going between them, then you can separate your bank even further. But here's, like I said, I got that like that. That way they go ahead and they, these two are ran in parallel together, these battery banks. So I have four 24 volts. Well, for making my 24 volt setup here, two two 24 volt banks ran together, and then they run through this wire right here, and this wire is going into a fuse as an extra safety precaution. And on the actual uh, household box here, I ran this leg right here is 24 volts all the way up. Then I ran over here, and one of these ground straps is for 24 volts also on these ground legs. So only one of these legs has only 24 volt items on it. Over here, I have the same thing. These are all 12 volts all the way across here, and they're being fed right in here. This is all my 12 volt stuff feeding right into there. And they also got their own ground strapping. Here's the 24 volt ground strap, and here's my 12 volt strap for the grounds. I guess technically you could tie them all together in one big bar, but I want to go ahead and separate them for peace of mind. So that's how that's done right there. You know, so that gives you a little more. Like I said, I've got to clean all this up. But at least it shows you how everything functions. Like I said, you know, there's this. Now, mind you, this is a DC amp clamp. A lot of people make the mistake of using an AC clamp. This is the Mac Tool ones. I got one off eBay. Uh, I think it was a it was a model UT-203 from China. I paid two o three. I paid uh, twenty three dollars for the unit and like ten bucks for shipping. Shipped to the door from China. It took two weeks to get to me, and it's just as good as this one, within point one accuracy of this. So. If I was, if anybody wants to read DC uh, amps and do it the easy way, you definitely want to do this. Like I said, the other one I have is a UT-203. You just make sure when you look the listing on eBay that it actually shows that it's a DC amp clamp. It shows the amperage up to, I think it was like 400 or 600 amps DC. 
My AC clamp will not read these. So make sure you do that. And now you can also see that my capacitor now is showing 14.2 because my TV is currently not on and there's no load on my system right now because I have everything off and everything because I've been outside anyhow showing you all everything else. And then my charge show is showing 13.8 over there. So, but that gives you an idea. We are charging at 22 amps almost. Well, now we're down 21 amps, but close enough. Uh, and if you actually want to look at my 24 volts, so I think I'm getting an amp because I have a... Uh, the panels up there are over an amp each, but when you run them at 24 volt, your amperage cuts in half. Your voltage is higher, but you're cutting half. Actually, we're doing uh, 1.5 amps. So if that was at 12 volts, instead, we'd be at about 3 amps. So and that's what's charging these batteries. And what I do is I just, whenever I'm running a big appliance or I decide just to go ahead and drain the batteries, I just go ahead and turn on the grid tie and it starts pulling the juice from there. Otherwise, it's getting charged at you know, a few, couple few amps. So this, this clamp definitely makes it very easy on you. Very easy. So, I mean, all you got to do is make sure any amp clamp you're reading has the, the line with the dots. Let's see if I can get a good picture of it right here. You don't want the squiggly line. You want a line with three dots under, underneath it. That's going to indicate to you that the DC amp clamp, not AC. The line right below that one, the, the white A right there, is an AC. You don't need to read AC amps in this. You need to read DC amps only. All right. For example, I will go ahead and let's show you this. Let's go ahead and turn our 24 battery bank back on, and we're going to read the wires here because obviously we got an amp charging, and we're going to watch this change. I'm going to pull amperage off it to run a grid tie. And now it's going to start pulling amperage. Now it's got a negative wire line on it because it's now pulling juice. I think it pulls about 9 to 10 amps at full load to get a grid tie doing 200 something amps. Or 200 something watts, excuse me, not amps. Of course, it's going to be offset by that amp coming into it as well. There you go 9.7, 9.99. Now 10, and our watts are at 211 right now. 210. At 10.9, climb it a little bit more. Of course, we do have. Uh, like I said it's going the other way, so technically, it's probably an amp and a half higher because, like I said, we do have you know, the solar coming into this. So now I'm turning it back off. Now you're seeing that that's positive, so that's I got one amp coming in right now because it looks like uh, the clouds are coming over again. But if you have any questions, give me a, a holler on here, and uh, we can go go from there. Later.